world. Book unforgettable travel experiences at getyourguide.com. Oh, hey, everybody. I think we're actually live right now. Brian, I got to apologize. I had some spam pop up on my end. That's not your problem. Welcome to this Tech Check Plus live stream. We're talking about next generation e-commerce. We're joined by the CEO of FedEx office, Brian Phillips. Brian, thanks so much for joining us. And sorry about that crackle. I'm not quite sure where that's coming from. It's all right. Thank you, Frank, for having me. I'm excited to be here. I appreciate your interest in FedEx and in the Roxo project. Awesome. So you kind of already yeah, tipped our hand. Right that's what we're talking about right now. Uh oh. I think this is on. This is me Welcome not muting everything. On my end, Brian. I don't know, apologize. First time doing this, but anyway, um, we're going to talk to you about something, and I'm sure you're going to be way better at doing this, uh, talking about this, than I am this live stream. Next generation e-commerce. <laughs> we're talking about FedEx's Roxo robot for delivery. Um, first off, I want to ask you um, if you had to describe it to someone who's never seen it. I've seen it, and we're going to try to get the video up. Not sure if we can, um, but if you had to describe it to someone who's never seen it, how would you describe Roxo? Well, it, it is game changing technology. It's about 450 pounds. It sits uh, about four, four and a half feet high. And it is a delivery device that allows us to connect retailers to their consumers in, in a very friendly, economic and, uh, and uh, low carbon footprint way. So a uh, brand new solution. Uh, we're continuing to work on it to bring it to market, but we're excited about where we stand and where we go next. All right. So Roxo, for those who haven't seen it, you can look online and see pictures of it. It's built on an electric wheelchair base. So it's kind of rough and tumble. It can go upstairs and things like that. Um, based on the pictures, I'd say it's about three feet, maybe two and a half feet high. Um, it's a, you know about as wide as about maybe three feet wide. I've never seen one in person, but I've certainly seen the pictures and the videos. And it has a lot of different applications, as you mentioned, for retailers. So um, what would be would the best use case or the use case that you're using it for right now? And where are you testing it in, in urban, suburban, rural areas? Kind of give us a sense of what's going on with it at the moment. Well, that's the exciting thing about Roxo is that, you know, the use cases are significant. Uh, you know, we've we've identified dozens of them and we've already begun to test the, the most uh, most interesting, highest potential ones that that we've come across. Uh, you know, it's everything from uh, B to C for uh, soft goods and hard goods, uh, as well as quick serve restaurants, uh, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, et cetera. Uh, and we've been working with customers to uh, try these things out in a real world environment and had a lot of success so far. All right. So you mentioned B2C. That's residential e-commerce. And I think a lot of people's ears probably perked up. That's a pretty exciting idea. So we're going to talk much more about Roxo and the prospects. But I got to ask you, just kind of jump ahead. When are we going to see a robot deliver our package? Well, we've already started some deliveries. Uh, we've done live deliveries across uh, six or seven different retailers and quick serve restaurants. Um, it's in test mode, but these are real customers and these are real orders. Uh, and we've been really pleased with the results so far. Our next step uh, is to do this over a longer period of time in repetition, basically run the wheels off the bot to make sure that it operates uh, in a way that uh, we're, we're certain that it'll deliver on the experience, the economics, safety, and overall uh, the solution that our customers want. So we'll be starting this fall in parts of Texas to, to run live orders on a continuous 24 seven basis. All right, we, we have people joining us just now, Brian. So just to recap, we got off to a bit of a technically rough start, all my fault, but just to recap, we're joined now by FedEx office CEO, Brian Phillips. We're talking about next generation e-commerce, specifically robot delivery. FedEx has the Roxo robot. So just one more time, Brian, if you wouldn't mind kind of explaining what Roxo does and what the use cases are. Yeah, you know, this is a this is a delivery device and it's part of a portfolio of solutions that FedEx is putting into place for same day, last mile on demand delivery. Um, we have the traditional van and driver approach using FedEx same day city, uh, and that's very active in verticals uh, such as healthcare, automotive, perishables, et cetera. But there are certain things that, that don't make sense to send out in a 2000 pound uh, vehicle. Uh, and, and don't make sense economically to have a, a driver take care of. It's a space we don't serve today. And so we lean heavily on technology, on autonomy uh, and, and sensors and the ecosystem that supports it uh, to make this uh, a reality. And we believe it's an underserved space. We don't think anybody's figured it out yet. 
uh, and, and we are well on our way. So when you say it's some areas that you don't serve right now, we're talking food delivery, same day delivery. Can you be a bit more specific about those areas that you think you want to push into? Yeah, this is uh, the, the concept behind Roxo is to put this capacity on site at the retailer or the quick serve restaurant um, so that it's available to them on demand. You don't have to, uh, you know, make a phone call and bring in a driver and then turn around and deliver it to the customer. The capacity is right there and available. Um, and we'll be integrated into that customer's order management system. Uh, we will be integrated into that customer's consumer communication uh, platform. And ultimately, it'll be an end-to-end -end experience for their customer. Um, you know, place an order. Uh, it gets placed into Roxo. Roxo sent out on delivery. Uh, we expect it to be done uh, in under 30 minutes, in under three miles, and uh, and do it at a price point that's uh, well below the alternatives that are available in the marketplace today. Well, you're kind of leading into my next question. Um, where, what point do you see robots like this one? Maybe not Roxo itself, maybe a different generation. Oh, you're on your third generation of Roxo right now. But robots overall replacing human drivers, which I know how hard your drivers work. They drive, they deliver, they walk up and down stairs, they walk up and down driveways. Sometimes there's dogs out there. I have a dog myself. Um, they face so much. Um, when we see regular robot delivery as opposed to human delivery when it comes to last mile, because I think it will be pretty hard to replace people in your sortation centers and things like that. Yeah, this isn't a replacement strategy at all. This is uh, going after an untapped market altogether. Um, today, uh, the customers that we work with, you know, they're telling us that they have not solved it yet. Uh, and, you know, we don't serve it because the economics don't make it conducive to do so. And so the only way uh, to help retailers unlock the power of their brick and mortar and deliver on demand, same day, last mile uh, for small small goods and, and, and for prepared foods is to do it using technology, to do it to using uh, autonomy. And you're saying this would be comparable to hiring a person or perhaps even cheaper? Uh, it's cheaper. It's, it's um, complementary to our van and driver workforce that we already have. You know, as my grandfather likes to say, it's the right tool for the right job. Um, and in this case, uh, the tool hadn't been invented yet. And so it's a space that FedEx doesn't play in today. It's a space where retailers and restaurants um, are, are relying on other alternatives like the, the gig economy and um, crowdsourcing. But uh, we don't believe that it's solved it in a, in a manner that, uh, that uh, satisfies their need. And therefore, it leaves an opportunity for us to go in and do so using uh, this new technological breakthrough. Well, your competitors, Amazon and UPS, they're also testing some next generation solutions. Amazon has its scout robot. Um, UPS is testing more drones. They're more focused on drones and I've spoken to them. They say they're taking more of a wait and see approach when it comes to other things. Is there any competitive pressure for FedEx to get a delivery robot going on, in, on scale uh, and scale it up ahead of anybody else doing it, whether it's one of your competitors like Amazon or UPS or someone else? I don't see it as competitive pressure. Um, what we're trying to do is to meet an unmet need with the right type of technology to do so. And, and quite frankly, FedEx is engaged in a wide spectrum of autonomy, robotics, automation to solve a, a number of problems that that we have today that you know we don't have the available labor to go out and, and, and solve for. So um, we've got a lot of irons in the fire. We believe for the space that I'm talking about, Roxo is a unique device with unique capabilities uh, that is able to solve it in a way that nobody else out there that we know of is working on. We think the world gets extremely complicated the minute your payload leaves the ground. Um, and there are a lot of challenges with uh, making drones reliable and available around the clock in all types of weather conditions um, and with payloads that make sense economically. Um, we know that there are a lot of alternatives out in the marketplace from sidewalk bots all the way up to automobile based autonomy, um, but they're not right sized for the opportunity that we're talking about here. And so we've invested very heavily in this space. Uh, and, and I believe uh, it's a, a differentiator. The technology itself is unmatched. We have the ability to run on the sidewalk and the ability to run on the side of the road. We can stitch together routes based upon the conditions 
uh, and the time of the day and the traffic and uh, whatever's most efficient and uh, safest from point A to point B. Most devices aren't able to do that. Sidewalk bots can only go as far as the sidewalk goes. And auto-based bots, they have a much higher level of, um, uh, of requirements in terms of their autonomy and, and the way that they operate. So we, we mm -hmm. fit in a space in between that we think is a real sweet spot. All right. So again, for anyone just joining us, we are with the CEO of FedEx office, Brian Phillips, talking next generation delivery, specifically robot delivery. So Brian, I want to talk to you about what this means for potential customers of yours. We've been really focusing on the consumer end of it. What does it look like? How does it get places? But for a retailer or a restaurant or some other customer of yours that wants to bring robot delivery to their business, how would the cost and the pricing work? Is it a subscription? Do they actually buy the robot from you? No, it's not our intention to be in the in the bot business. You know, we're in the delivery business. So the, the Roxo is just a means to an end, uh, and we build it to suit. We build it to fit into uh, the way we envision a, a last mile, same day portfolio operating, um, and it's meant to be sold along with all the other phenomenal solutions that FedEx has in in the delivery space. Um, we, we spent a lot of time with customers understanding their needs. In fact, early on in the project, Fred Smith and I, our, our chairman, we got on an airplane. We went to see seven different CEOs around the U.S. These are big brand names, you know, in, in big box retail, quick serve restaurant, pharmaceutical, home, uh, uh, home uh, health care, and so on and so forth. Uh, and, and, and we batted a thousand. The engagement was there. The need was present. And, and, and it was obvious very, very early on that if we were able to deliver what we had in mind, uh, that we'd have a, a real winner on our, on our hands. Um, it, it's set up in a way that, that it's meant to be very, very competitive. Um, in fact, competitively superior to the other uh, options or solutions that are out there on, on the market today. Do you mean pricing when you talk about being competitive or just performance? I'm talking about pricing for certain, uh, well below what it costs a, and a crowdsourced driver to take things from point A to point B. It's meant to be uh, ecologically friendly, you know, because you're not running a 2000 pound vehicle and, and burning fossil fuels to get a, a two pound package from point A to point B. And ultimately, the most important part is that the capacity is there in small increments. You can actually line up a number of Roxos along the outer wall at a retailer, uh, and they are available on demand to be able to deliver in, in a very, very tight window of time under all conditions. Um, that's one of the challenges with, with crowdsourcing is what we're learning that that, that capacity isn't very predictable um, and it's not always available. And it's not always available at, a, at an economic rate because what you've got is a lot of shared labor across various models, whether it's food delivery or uh, ride share or, or merchandise delivery. And, and those, those models tend to uh, have peaks and valleys. With uh, Roxo from FedEx, you know, we'll, we'll have very predictable uh, and reliable demand. We've enveloped it in an ecosystem. It's the same technology we use to make sure that our ground and express networks run efficiently and on time. And, you know, quite frankly, we're reusing some of the technologies that we've developed over the years, you know, reservation system, instead of reserving space on aircraft, we're using it to reserve Roxos or space within Roxos. Um, mm -hmm. the, the connectivity between the order management systems and our uh, operating systems is the same sort of connectivity, the same sort of APIs that we use in our core business. And the way that we track and operate Roxo from point A to point B isn't dissimilar from the way that we run, uh, you know, our, our FedEx Ground and FedEx Express network. So, what right. makes us different is that we're not in the bot business. We didn't set out to build a device and then go look for an opportunity. We took the opportunity and we took the delivery business, uh, and then we went out and we built the right device to unlock that potential. FedEx Office CEO Brian Phillips on the future of autonomous delivery, robot delivery in this case. We appreciate your time so much. Thank you for sharing this outlook for Roxo and autonomous delivery in general. Thank you. And great, thank you all pleasure. for watching. This will still be available on YouTube after we end this discussion. Brian, you have a great day.